Speech sounds from other languages, that is to say, from non-English languages. So the first ones that we'll be looking at in um, this particular video are vowels that are rounded and front. So in a previous video, I talked about how all of the round vowels in English are with the tongue in the back of the mouth. So they are back rounded vowels. But of course, other languages have front rounded vowels. So this first one that we see here, the lowercase y, is not pronounced as a y as it would be in English, but this is a front, high front tense rounded vowel. It's an u sound, u. And if you wanna be able to make this sound for yourself, Start by making an E sound, E, and then holding your tongue in the same position, force yourself to purse your lips. E, U, 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 and that's that U sound. And you can do the same thing with this one, which is a mid front tense rounded vowel. So you start by making the A sound, uh, don't do an don't do a diphthong. Don't move it into an i afterwards. Just do an a sound a, and then again force yourself to round your lips a u. This one is a high front lax rounded vowel, so that one make the i sound i, and then round your your lips i. And then this one is going to be a mid front lax unround or round lax rounded vowel. So make the e eh sound e, eh, and there you got it. We in English we don't use nasalization as a way to distinguish vowels. Other languages, uh, notably French do. So there are differences in French between whether or not you're pronouncing a vowel with a um, nasal sound or not. So for example, we can do the e eh sound and drop the velum so that the air flows through the nose. Most of the time we've got the velum closing that passage off or mostly closing it off. And in fact, when you listen to English, we all have a little bit of nasalization on our vowels, some people more pronounced than others. So you, you've got people like uh, Woody Allen, who talks like this with a good nasal sound to it, which means that a relatively large amount of air is flowing through the nose when he's pronouncing his vowels. And then we've got people on the other extreme, like um, Sylvester Stallone, who seems to have no air going through his nose, and so he talks like this all the time. So most of the time when we're speaking English, we've got a bit of nasalization, but not too much. When we're talking about nasalized vowels, it's going to be more pronounced. So it's going to be an, uh, uh, the first one, for example, would be an eh sound, eh, and then nasalize it, making some of that air go through the nose, eh, eh, eh. And then this one would be an ah sound, ah, and then with the nasalization it would be ah, uh, Ah, uh, ah, uh. then we've got the open o, 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 and the nasalized o, o, o. That would be like in the French bon, bon. Okay, that does it for our nasalized vowels. Then we've got some fricatives in other positions that um, we don't have them in English. So, for example, we've got bilabial fricatives. Um, that would be where we use the two lips. But rather than fully closing them off as we would for P or B, we have a partial constriction there, um, a very close constriction. So the first one would be F, A, F. The second would be voiced A, V, A, V, V, which you, you hear in certain varieties of Spanish, for example, where instead of a labial dental V sound, you would get a bilabial V sound. So, for example, 20 would be 20. 
All right, then we've got palatals. So uh, we've got those post alveolars like the sh and the j in English. So this, the body of the tongue is a little bit further back in the mouth, reaching up towards the hard palate, making a sh, sh sound or a j, j, a sh, a j. Then there's also velar fricatives that you might hear in, say, a Germanic language. So, for example, the composer Bach, which we pronounce in English, would in German be pronounced Bach. So that would be an aha, aha. And then, of course, that can also be voiced, aga, aga. Then there are pharyngeals, which I, I'm not very good at pronouncing pharyngeals. The pharynx is um, back further in the mouth, uh, basically back in the throat. So this would be aha, 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 aha. We also have stops that can be said in those uh, in similar positions. So there are the palatal stops, kya, a kya, and uh, a gya, a gya. Those um, are notably in uh, Hungarian, a language that I speak. So uh, we find quite a few words in Hungarian have palatal stops. A gya, a gya. There are also uvular stops. The uvula is the little thing that hangs in the back of your throat. So if you ever open your mouth really wide and look in the mirror and you see that little hangy thing, that's the uvula. Uh, we can use that as a place of articulation to create stops. Um, notably, for example, Inuit languages have uvular stops. So that'd be a ka, a ka, and a ga, a ga. And then we've got nasals. The first one is going to be a palatal nasal. So, anya, anya. We probably have that in some words, like for example, onion, onion is probably pronounced with a palatal. Uh, this would be common in, for example, Spanish. You get that, that little um, tilde above the N, that's a palatal N. And then we've got this here, what looks like a capital N, but it's kind of a small capital. That's going to be a uvular nasal. Uh, uh, uh. Trills, and I'll be completely honest, I am terrible at doing trills. I've tried and tried all my life to figure out how to do trills. I'm just not good at them. Um, so this would be a bilabial trill. So think about making a raspberry with your lips. Something like that. It would be voiced. I cannot do it. But uh, maybe you can. And then there would be the tongue tip trill, where the tip of your tongue is uh, vibrating, basically. It's moving really fast. Um, that one I just can't do. I can do the uvular trill, which is this one here, the small capital R. That would be ara, ara. And then there's the flap, um, which is a voiced alveolar flap. It's very similar to a stop, except for the tongue just taps, just moves up and taps that rather than actually lingering there. Um, so that would be something like ada, ada, ada. Um, we do have it in English um, phonetics. We'll be talking quite a bit about that when we get into phonology. Uh, Hungarian has flaps in a lot of different positions. Um, and in fact, my name, Randy, when Hungarians would pronounce my name, it would come out with a flap instead of a um, American retroflex approximant. Um, so their version of R in Hungarian is actually a flap. So they would say something like Rendi, Rendi, 